What code snippets are we looking at today? Executing system command from Python. What is the recommended approach for invoking subprocessors in Python? As of Python 3.5, the recommended approach for invoking subprocessors in Python is to use the run function for all use cases it can handle. For more advanced use cases, the underlying Popin interface can be used directly. How do you use the run function to execute a program or call a system command from Python? To use the run function to execute a program or call a system command from Python, you can use the following code. The code creates a completed process object that contains information about the command that was executed and the return code. What is the purpose of the completed process object? The completed process object is returned by the run function and contains information about the command that was executed and the return code. How can you capture the output of a system command? To capture the output of a system command, you can pass the subprocess.py parameter to the stout or stare argument of the run function. Here's an example. This will output the standard output of the system command. What is the benefit of using subprocess run instead of popen? The benefit of using subprocess.run instead of popen is that run waits for the command to successfully finish and returns a completed process object that contains information about the command that was executed and the return code. When would you use popen instead of subprocess.run? You would use popen instead of subprocess.run for more advanced use cases that run cannot handle. Popin provides more control over the execution of the command, such as the ability to poll, send signals, terminate, and wait for the subprocess. I'm dying to see some example. Please show us some. Sure. Use subprocess.run as shown here. On Python 3.4 and earlier, use subprocess.call instead of .run. Solution 2 Typical Implementation You are free to do what you want with the stout data in the pipe. In fact, you can simply omit those parameters, stout equals and stare smiley face and it'll behave like os.system. Solution 3. Using os.system. Note that this is dangerous, since the command isn't cleaned. There are a bunch of functions, exec and spawn, that will do similar things. Note that this is dangerous, since the command isn't cleaned. There are a bunch of functions, exec and spawn, that will do similar things. Solution 4. Using SH SH is a subprocess interface which lets you call programs as if they were functions. This is useful if you want to run a command multiple times. Solution 5. Using Plumbum Plumbum is a library for script-like Python programs. You can call programs like functions, as in sh plumbum is useful if you want to run a pipeline without the shell. Solution 6. 
Solution 6. Using Pexpect. Pexpect lets you spawn child applications, control them and find patterns in their output. This is a better alternative to subprocess for commands that expect a TTY on Unix. Solution 7. Using Fabric. Fabric is a Python 2.5 and 2.7 library. It allows you to execute local and remote shell commands. Fabric is simple alternative for running commands in a secure shell, SSH. Envoy. Envoy is known as subprocess for humans. It is used as a convenience wrapper around the subprocess module. Please summarize for us on how to execute system commands programmatically. Overall, executing a program or calling a system command from Python can be done using the subprocess library. The recommended approach is to use the run function for all use cases it can handle. This function returns a completed process object that contains information about the command that was executed and the return code. If you need more control over the execution of the command, then Popin can be used instead. It's important to use caution when building strings programmatically to prevent security issues. Please help us grow by liking the video, subscribing and sharing. Thanks!